Welcome to Taiwan Talk. I'm Trevor Tordemasi, and this week I'm speaking with John Brownlee, an actor and director who has been a driving force behind Taipei Shorts, a series of short stage plays written, directed, and performed by the community right here in Taiwan. So, John, how would you explain Taipei Shorts? Um, first of all, thank you for having me. Trevor. Absolutely, um, and I say, I say, absolutely brilliant. Um, uh, Taipei Shorts is a, a collaboration of local artists who um, get together for the purpose of keeping. Keeping uh, mm -hmm. keeping English theatre alive in Taiwan, uh, we create platforms for new and experienced writers, directors, and actors to uh, showcase their work. Uh, what we're doing in September is we're putting on a new event um, with five original plays um, starting September 11th, September 12th, September 13th. Um, five new original plays, all in one performance, um, offering live subtitles as well. And uh, and this project has been going for uh, a few years, right? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, no. Uh, actually, March two thousand nineteen was our first one. So eighteen oh my months. God. The, yeah, the time flies so quickly. Twenty twenty has been a long year. Well, uh, how did the uh, the idea for this project first come to you? Um, well, we both know Brooke Hall. When he left in twenty eighteen, I mm -hmm. think a lot of actors and and. Um, artists were just misplaced. They were like, "What can we do with our time now?" So, uh, really, I got together with some of the the writers and actors who who um, were involved in Brooks' acting class, and just said, "You know, do you want to? I, I have this idea about putting on some short plays. Do you want to get involved? Do you know any writers?" And then it sort of evolved from there. Organizing a team of of writers and directors and performers from scratch is a massive undertaking. Um, what has the process been like from first contact to opening night? Um, I mean, first contact. I think we just we try and get the message out that we're looking for for writers to to uh, produce a ten to fifteen minute script. Uh, the it's usually between one to four actors we're looking for. Then from that we do a selection process. Um, then after that we see if the writers are interested in directing. And um, and then we move on to auditions, and then the same sort of selection process takes place, and then we. What is the uh, what is the most popular sort of application? Is it the acting? Is it the? Uh, do you get a lot of writing submissions? And... Um, this last uh, this this last submission we had for writing, we had over fifty uh, submissions. Yeah, so that's fifty scripts. Fifty scripts. Fifty wow. separate scripts we had. So it it really was um, difficult to choose to narrow it down. Um, and uh, on average, about thirty, we get about thirty auditionees. Um, we've had about thirty auditionees for every every type of shots we've done. This is our third one now. So. And and what about for the directing? Because that's the third final piece uh, of the trinity. Yeah, yeah. Well, d directing. I, I'm I'm fortunate because a lot of the writers have wanted to direct their their work as well. I think you know, as a writer, you you want to you want to keep you want to keep it going. You want to um, s see it manifest into this into onto stage. So um, we we've been very fortunate. A lot of directors have take a lot of writers have taken up the directing mantle as well. Um, how has the the process changed from from year to year? Uh, going from, or has it stayed? Uh, oh no, definitely not. Pretty consistent. I mean, the, the first time the first Taipei shots at the Red Room in March two thousand nineteen. That was um, that was tough. We had one director who dropped out about a month into into the rehearsal process. So I had to pick up that play and direct that and then for the performances i was doing the lighting and this and operating the sound as well so that was tough um the second time it was certainly a lot more streamlined which you know which you were involved in uh, my my wife came on as co-producer um she organized things made it ma made it a lot easier for for myself and this time round, um the third type of shorts we we have the social innovation lab and they've been involved with us um they've they've helped us out with spaces and they've given us some rehearsal spaces to use so it makes things a lot easier for us well uh well john i want to ask a little bit about you uh where are you from and uh, how did you get into acting um i'm from the uk uh from a place called yorkshire mm -hmm. um which is nice nice little area in in the north of england um I got into acting because uh, my father was, he was into amateur dramatics. He performed in Australia and um, a lot in the UK. And um, he just started taking me to shows when I was younger, started taking me to see theatre plays and 
And then he pushed me into joining this acting club. And at first I was reluctant, but as soon as I got there, you know, I just really fell in love with performing and just being on the stage. So that's where it sort of grew. And then from there, I went into high school and trained um, at high school and then into university as well. Have you felt more of a of a connection to the the stage rather than than film, or have you grown into to loving both? I mean, I, I love the film as a medium. I, I don't have that much experience making films. Um, I've done two short films here, but my my real passion is with with theatre, the stage. Hey, one one more thing about you: When did you first start directing? When did you make a transition from from performance to kind of getting behind the the curtain or behind the camera? Or maybe writing, or um, I, I think uh, I mean it was part of part of our training at, at high school and university. We had to we had to direct something. We had to collaborate. We had to do solo direction and and work as a collaboration to direct something. And the same with writing as well. We had to write a lot of our own work. Um, in in Taiwan, I've directed two two plays now. This will be my second play with Taipei Shorts. Nice. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's a lot it's a lot of fun just watching watching them grow and everything like watching the actors grow and just seeing it evolve, seeing you know the starting point. Being part of this community in Taiwan, how is it different from from in the UK? I think the biggest difference where, where I'm from, at least within about twenty miles, there there's about ten or fifteen theater clubs, theaters, stages where you can just go and just watch amateur dramatics. Um, and, and be involved in some way, whether it be the stagecraft or the lighting or the sound or stage managing or acting or performing or directing. So uh, there are all these opportunities there. Um, in Taiwan, I, I've that's that's why we're doing Taipei Shorts because I just want to create that sort of community, that sort of environment where um, there, there is more theatre. I, I think it's, it's, it's an important medium. What is it like organizing English theatre in Taiwan, uh, which is a, a Chinese-speaking country? Um, you know, Red Room uh, has been fantastic. They 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 have they have um, crossed the boundaries for us. They've they've been involved with the government. They've done a lot of things for us. They've they've really been uh, supportive of what we're doing. So they've been very helpful in the in the Chinese um, side of things. We've also got translators who are involved. Um, you know, uh, translating all the scripts so we can have we can have the live subtitles. We can we can make it more accessible and. I think as Taiwan wants to move into this bilingual 2030, it, um, you know, I think theatre is a great medium to do that. Is it difficult to direct performers who have learned different styles from around the world, or do you feel like what makes a good performance has a sort of international standard? Have you seen I, different things here as opposed to seeing things back home? I think you know, um, to be a good performer, you just need to be professional and have a, a good attitude um, and be, be open to... Um, to to join in rehearsals, to get involved, to try new things. If you don't, if you don't have those things, if you closed off, then I I feel that you you're not willing to collaborate. So I, I think that's the most important thing: professionalism and, and attitude. Do you find yourself uh, yearning to also move on in the future to directing long form plays um, with with full intermissions and <laughs> and everything? Uh, I think I mean the if. I know I'm going back to Brooke Hall again, but I know when Brooke came to Taiwan, he had a, he had a list of maybe twenty or thirty plays that he had to do before he, before he died. His bucket list. Okay. Um, and he he got to do quite a few of those. I don't really have that um, that that in me. I mean, there's a whole thing with rights and all these other things, and um, I, I think for now it's just. I'm just more focused on building building a small community where where people are able to express themselves and um, and and get their work out there. Um, I mean, what we've done at the moment this is our twenty first this will be our twenty first play that we've produced, and um, we've worked with twenty four performers and fourteen writers, so we're really just trying to build a new a new community. Can you describe your thought process for choosing who best fits in a role? Um, really, I leave that up to the directors. Um, as I'm reading through the scripts, I, ha I might have an idea who might be able to play this role or that role. Um, but really, it's, it's the final decision is down to the director. I will try and push them towards a more diverse or go for blind casting, uh, make, it, make it a nice diverse cast, maybe somebody new who we haven't worked with as well. Um, but 
the, I, I respect the director's decision. I mean, it's it's how they how they see the play moving forward. So I will. Is a is blind that. casting what it sounds like? Yeah. So I mean, really, it, it doesn't matter on the on the color of their skin. It, it doesn't matter if they're male or female. Um, if it's a male role, a female can play that role. So really, you know, I, I encourage that. I encourage as diverse as as possible. Okay. Let's work with the diverse blind, depending on the person in the in the role, not uh, not their level of performance. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Performance is, is probably still yeah. necessary to some level. Blind um, type, yeah, blind type casting maybe. Uh, this this question comes from my heart. An acting teacher I, I had in the states he once gave me the advice that every young performer needs to this is a quote find their tribe. And when I asked him what that meant, he said that once you found a group of like minded peers who truly want to create together and lift each other up, um, that's exactly what you can do in the business. Have you found a tribe? Do you see any truth in, in that statement? In Taiwan, I, I mean, I, I think so. We've, like I say, we've worked with we've worked with writers. We continue to work with them. Uh, we've worked with performers. We continue to work with them. The people we've worked with in the past, we're happy to work with again. So, you know, I, I hope I hope to build this this I guess tribe you'd call it. How much can you tell us about the the stories behind the plays without you know going into spoiler territory? Do we have a subject matter, or what, do, we, do um, we keep these secret for now? I think the first that. Two of the plays you might know already if you've been to the previous Taipei shot. So that we have uh, "Living in the Tube 2, mm -hmm. um, which is which is written by William Chen, which is our only Mandarin play where we offer English uh, subtitles, live English subtitles. Um, that's that's about uh, influencers, online influencers, and we have Shashwati's Shashwati Talador's play, um, "Return of the Hero," which is a continuation of the story of uh, Sarah Brooks's character Bose. Um, which, which in that case, that was blind cast as well because uh, set. I think Bose was originally intended to be a male. Oh, was it the monk? It may, it may have been the monk, but we had a female play it. So, um, so that's the continuation of her. Uh, another great uh, Barry Hall classic play, which is called Nuclear Family, um, with DC DC Raper and Sarah Brooks. Um, the one that I'm directing is called Coffee from Yoriel, which is about just two sisters who are caring for their mother, their sick mother, next um, in the room next door. Um, and what, it's in the middle of the night, and one of them comes comes home late partying, and you know things are tough with them. Joshua Wallace Teddy, uh, I think it's it's a classic farce, um, classic comedy. It's it's very slapstick. It's all about timing. It's all about it's. You know, if you think about Buster Keating with the things where people are running on stage, it's it, it's all so com brilliantly comically timed. It's a great farce um, that he wrote, um, which I'm very looking forward to seeing. So uh, we're all really looking forward to seeing Taipei Shorts uh, on September 11th, 12th, and 13th. Can you tell us about uh, where we can find more information? Um, we we have a Facebook group. You can find um, it's called it's just called Taipei Shorts. Uh, so if you type that into Facebook, then then you can you can join the group. We'll accept you there. You can find behind. They can find information about all our actors, directors, uh, more information about the plays, play synopsis. Um, the the performances themselves are being held here in Xinjiang um, at uh, Fu Ren uh, University at the CFL Theatre. Um, yeah, it's like five minutes away from the MRT exit one. I Fu recall Ren. it's really close to the MRT. Yeah, it's incredibly close. And we can uh, find tickets online. You can find tickets online, and they're available at the door as well. But um, yeah, getting quick, I think just book online is the best thing to do. Are there any uh, extra credits or special thanks you'd like to throw out there for people in the in the performance community? I think, uh, you know, uh, aside from all the actors, the uh, writers, aside, actors, directors, the writers, actors, directors, performers, you know, thank you for putting up with me for these these past few months. Um, I also want to thank Anton Boats. Uh, he 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 stuck with us. He's composed the music again. It's another fantastic soundtrack for Taipei Shorts. He composed every single play, every single sound that you hear. Wow! You'll hear that. Um, he's a he's a fantastic sound engineer, and he does some amazing work. Um, so yeah, Anton. We have Manting Lin, who's operating the lights this time. So I mean, we're going to see some beautifully lit um, stages. Um, and then we have Injury Leonardi as well, who's doing, who's the subtitle operator. So any any Mandarin only speakers out there, you'll see you'll see Mandarin uh, subtitles while while the actors are speaking. She'll be furiously pushing buttons and making sure that the subtitles are up there, so you can understand every single word and not miss a beat. Um, so yeah, thank you to all of those people. Thank you to all the translators, and uh, thank you to my wife Alicia, who's uh, 
you know, worked incredibly hard as well as co-producer and director of photography. And thank you to you, of course, ICIT. Of course, and thank you to thank you yeah. for coming in. It's it's been wonderful talking about uh, Taipei Shorts three third edition coming up again on September eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth. Check it out on Facebook and uh, get tickets and and go see it. Thanks everyone for listening. Mm-hmm.